the exhibition, I started working on it about 20 months ago, and it was uh, short, not that long after the recession here started, um, and I felt um, that the exhibition was very timely in many ways. Um, the work you see here in the galleries was made um, at another time, in another era, during the midst of another recession in New York in the 1970s. Um, it was, in many ways, much rougher than it is now. Um, I think artists like Tricia and Jane Crawford could attest to the fact that they were living in lofts where there was maybe only one toilet in the whole building and they had to go all the way down to the basement to use that toilet. Um, it was quite a rough situation, um, both in terms of the kind of living conditions. Um, this Soho was a neighborhood that wasn't quite a neighborhood at that moment, um, a very kind of industrial setting, um, light manufacturing, and small businesses and warehouses had left the city and uh, left a lot of these kind of uh, cast iron loft buildings empty. Um, in these lofts, um, the artists saw an opportunity to create their own live-work situation. They were not zoned for living, um, they were only zoned for working, so the artists uh, decided to move in anyways um, and live there semi-illegally uh, by you know, hiding their mattress in a corner and um, putting their coke um, top, um, unplugging it and stowing it away. Um, but this kind of very fruitful um, and large spaces enabled them to have spaces for rehearsal. Trisha taught dance classes. They could have performances and art exhibitions in these lofts. Um, and um, really, it helped build a small community of like-minded individuals, not just um, in the visual arts, in the performing arts, musicians as well, filmmakers, and others were living in um, these buildings. So it was quite a small, intimate neighborhood, and the audience, I think, uh, was ripe for um, the type of work that was coming out at the time. Um, as I mentioned, the recession, um, in many ways, I think, it made artists um, consider you know, what you can make. You don't have to have a lot of expensive um, production. You don't need to you know, have industrially fabricated sculptures like the minimalists had done just a few years earlier. Um, you could you know, pick up material from the street. Laurie Anderson talks about Soho at the time as only you know, a desolate at night. There were two places to eat. Uh, one of them was food, which Gordon Meta Clark helped start. Um, and um, she would pick up scrap material from the streets and use it as the basis of her work. But the streets were not only a source of material, I think they were a source of ideas and a powerful context for the work. Um, artists like Trisha and Gordon um, made work in the streets of New York City. Um, we were standing next to open houses, Skip. Um, this isn't the actual one. I think the actual one is maybe still in use somewhere in New York City as a, a real Skip. Um, uh, uh, Gordon built a structure inside and left it on the streets and, and allowed dancers and other performers to make work for it. So it was very kind of spirit of generosity and openness that um, these artists fostered in New York. And Trisha used the city as a canvas. Um, she uh, had a, a brilliant performance in 1970, man walking down the side of a building. Um, and it, it comes, she's, I think one of her quotes was that um, she, she was influenced by the visual art she was seeing at the time, and that um, the simple idea of getting from point A to point B um, was a, a, you know, very much coming out of um, conceptual art, process art, minimalism, post-minimalism. Um, and the, it was creating a new way of performing. Um, I think she described it as a dance mission, and, and this is kind of echoing the words of Solvowit, who often describe art as a, a, a machine for generating ideas. Um, so, you know, into this rich context, um, they're a small community of artists built a scene, and they also physically built um, the community. Um, I mentioned that Matt Clark, along with several friends, started a restaurant food, and Gordon probably saw it as a bit of a conceptual art project or a, um, an artwork in, an, in and of itself, but it also served very practical purposes of providing a place where um, the artists could um, eat and gather in the neighborhood. Um, also, um, uh, one of the organizers of the restaurant, Carol Gooden, mentions that it provided jobs for artists, and it, it gave them the flexibility of being able to um, go out and 
leave their job for two, three weeks so they can have the opportunity to do an exhibition to perform on the road. Um, so that was important as well, this building of the infrastructure. Um, this exhibition includes not only um, uh, documentation of that era, a lot of the performances you'll see on video here. Um, it, we also include a lot of photographic documentation, um, some terrific photographs by figures like Babette Mangold and Peter Moore, who helped chronicle the scene, um, as well as drawings by each of the uh, participating artists, um, and um, uh, uh, larger scale work. Um, we have a section on urban interventions in the exhibition upstairs, two rooms upstairs and two rooms here, which feature um, the work that Meta Clark and um, also Laurie Anderson participated in this group called An Architecture, which was really a, a kind of experimental group that included a number of other artists who were interested in exploring notions of space in the 